Some of you may already know this, but yesterday, on February 27th, 2024, uh, it was reported that Nintendo has officially filed a, a lawsuit in the state of Rhode Island against the makers of Yuzu, which is a Nintendo Switch emulator. I wanted to essentially go through this, the... Both the suit, what they they're filing, it has yet to be accepted as of the time of recording of this video, which is the twenty eighth, and just kind of see what it is. Um, I'm gonna link to the this site in the description, so you can take a look at that. Basically, um, again, full disclaimer, I am not a lawyer. I am not here to talk about whether this will succeed, whether this will fail, because I don't have enough of a background to stay that one way or the other. However, I am a couple months off of BSc in math, so I know how to make a logical argument. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through to see what they have here and kind of talk about the arguments a little bit. Again, not legal advice. I could very easily be wrong. Maybe somebody like Law by Mike or somebody will do something on this in which case go watch that one but yeah i'm also going to give my own personal thoughts on all of this throughout so without further ado let's get into it um yeah that's this basically is you know regular old boilerplate stuff to protect ip rights and its investments yes with a nintendo design the nintendo switch and it's various games with security stuff. Meant to the idea is meant to prevent people from playing unauthorized or pirated copies of Nintendo's games, whether on Switch or other stuff. Okay. Basically, this is just going through and stating the kind of more or less what how stuff works on the Switch as like kind of a quick TLDR more or less. Um, this is where the stuff gets in. Line paragraph five. Yuzu unlawfully circumvents the technological measures of Nintendo Switch games and allows for the play of encrypted Nintendo Switch games on devices other than a Nintendo Switch. Yuzu does this by executing code necessary to defeat Nintendo's many technological measures associated with its games. Goes on to basically talk about um, use code that decrypts video game files before and during runtime using an illegally obtained copy of product keys that are normally secured on the Switch. They either obtain those, the users, let's take a look, let's actually just circle this here. Users obtain the keys either through unlawful sites or by unlawfully hacking a Switch console. Okay, users obtain this. What that, but notice what it says, users obtain it. Now here's what I'm going to do, I'm just going to switch over to the FAQ at Yuzu here. Just gonna highlight this real quick. You are legally required to dump your games from your Nintendo Switch. Okay. <clears throat> and yet, so on the FAQ of Yuzu, it's quite clear. You are the one that legally has to do it. So, okay. So I'm not seeing where Yuzu here. Yuzu is not promoting anything piracy wise but it now is saying the lead developer has publicly acknowledged that most users pirate th these things and on games online that users website provides instructions for its users telling them how to unlock lawfully hack their own nintendo switch and how to make unauthorized copies of games and wow that is a mouthful that is really poor english i'm sorry wow <laughs> Um, Yuzu's website provides instructions for its users telling them how to unlawfully hack their own Nintendo Switch and how to make unauthorized copies and unlawful. <sighs> Just take out the ands. That's awful. In bad English aside, um, I'm genuinely failing to see. Let's just take taking a look at this part. Instructions for its users telling them how to unlawfully hack it and unlawfully obtain keys. Okay. Basically, it's ar the argument is that this whole quick start guide from on now is an, an illegal thing. Okay. But 
which is fine. It'll be interesting to see. I, I don't know enough. Like I said, I don't know enough about the various legalese and legal precedents here to have a, a definitive opinion. So maybe somebody in the comments can tell me about this. But if I tell you how to do something illegal, and then you go and do it, I'm not on the hook. Like, people could, people have those kinds of hypothetical discussions all the time. It doesn't mean anything. It only matter. The only per- But if you go and act on those, then that's on you. Like, in other words, use it. without users' decryption of Nintendo's encryption, decryption of Nintendo's encryption, unauthorized copies of games could not be played on PCs or Android devices. Yeah, it's probably true. I haven't seen the source code, but not really wanting to go through it. But what's interesting is this. Those keys, they are not included in using, which means there isn't, that part of it is not actually the risk. You need it to emulate the games, but it's on the users to get it. So, so far, there I don't really see anything here that is Yuzu's fault, other than the instruction stuff. And let's be realistic here. If Yuzu didn't tell you how to do it, other people were going to tell you how to do it. But with Yuzu in hand, nothing stops a player from obtaining and playing on lawful copies of any game made for the Switch without paying a dime to Nintendo or any of the hundreds. This is this is actually this is valid. This is true. I I you know what? Oh wow, this is completely true. And issue of I'm going to issue here right now a full condemnation of anybody pirating current-gen titles from any developer without having bought them first to play on Astral Hardware. So, you know, I don't mean people who, let's say, downloaded um, Breath of the Wild ROM because they didn't want to dump it from the Switch. That's to me, is different from just downloading Breath of the Wild ROM without buying the game from Nintendo. So if you're just straight-up pirating the game and have no intention of ever buying it to support the development team, shame on you. Genuinely, shame on you. That it's not okay. In general, when you find a game you love, you should always make an effort to support the developers. Always. Even and that applies to current gen stuff and older stuff. Of course, for older stuff, it gets into more of like a gray area, especially as things become unobtainable. And then you get into game preservation stuff, which is not the point of this video. But in general, a good faith effort should be, in my, in my opinion, a good faith effort should be made to obtain the necessary hardware and the necessary software to play. And if it can't be done, then you go from there. However, the defendant employs several developers. And it defends traffic on a site. Yeah, use use open source. And that's. So even if this does somehow get taken down, U2 just pops right up. Like, that's not a problem. Defendant and its agents on lawful conduct uh, has caused Nintendo and all these parties that develop games tremendous harm. Okay. Basically, mm, recognizing the threats faced by copyright owners... Like Nintendo in the age of digital piracy, Congress enacted the DMCA, because this is filed in the U.S., so laws might differ in your country. In Canada, I'm pretty sure that this wouldn't be laughed out of court, but again, not a lawyer, not qualified to make that judgment. <laughs> um, don't really, I'm not, but I'm pretty sure in Canada I think it's okay to do, unless there's been some par parliament's done something I'm not aware of. Um... Yuzu falls squarely within these provisions. Yuzu circumvents Nintendo's stuff. Is that illegal, though? I'm not... I actually don't know. I thought there was precedent that says this could be done. Because the DMCA was mostly related to, like, DVD stuff, if I recall. And a lot of attempts to apply it to video game stuff have failed in the U.S., I think. I Don't quote me on that. I could easily be wrong. Um, defendants and its agents, trafficking, circumvention, directly injured, and damaged thing. Yeah. Okay. Basically, it's going through the allegations. To get any game off a Nintendo Switch console into the Yuzu, 
they must obtain the Switch's cryptographic keys from a hacked console which violates Nintendo's rights under the DMCA, make at least one unauthorized copy of the game, viol- and that violates the plaintiff's right of reproduction, which, when the copied game is Nintendo's... Ooh. Here's the interesting thing, though. Do you own physical media? Or do you have a light? Because with the digital stuff, you technically have a license to it. Is my understanding. But with the physical games, I'm pretty sure you get to own it. I'm pretty sure you own it. Which is why everybody these days is against digital media. Which I'm also, personally, I don't like it as much. But, interesting. That's going to be an interesting thing, because when the co- So does that apply to only physical games? Or to digital and physical? Or only digital? Because if it's in an EULA, they can't- The EULAs can't override existing laws, is my understanding. So, not sure how that one holds up. Defendant and its agents are fully aware of the use of Yuzu by others in performing cir- circumvention and in facilitating piracy at a colossal scale. Okay. That's... You know, again, it falls under the heading of companies. Is Yuzu responsible for the actions of its users? Because that's going to be an interesting question. I'm not sure it is. I'm not sure it is. Cause I, but I again, if it was just me looking at this as a logic basis, I'm not really sure that's a thing that you can really hold you that Nintendo can really hold Yuzu responsible for the piracy of its users. Not really sure that's a thing. But as to the circumvention, Yuzu's website acknowledges that the Nintendo Switch's decryption keys are required to decrypt and include links to software that unlawfully extract those keys. Okay, yeah. I mean, if you look at the quick start guide, yeah, there's definitely there's definitely some things. But I'm failing to see you know, it, yeah, mm, it, it, it depends, where all that stuff unlawful, that's what that argument hinges on. As to piracy, for example, the Tears of the Kingdom was unlawfully distributed, we, yes, this did happen, and I think, and frankly, shame on the people that did it, because it potentially ruined the experience for a lot of people, and I think that's a valid, this, again, this is a valid argument to go after the users over, not Yuzu. I'm not, in, in my, again, all of this obviously is just my opinion, but I'm, I'm failing to see where this is a problem. I'm je- I, like, if I was the judge, and, like, knowing what I know now, which is not very much about American law, or law just in general, I would dismiss this case. I'm not seeing anything here that is big, that, unless the TMCA is much more far, far-reaching than I think it is. I don't see an argument here. Nintendo has invested enormous resources. Yeah, good for you guys. That doesn't really matter. Today, Yuzu has provides any internet user in the world with the means to unlock. Yuzu does Yuzu provide it. To be clear, there is no lawful way to use Yuzu because it must to play Switch games because it must decrypt the game's emulation or encryption. Okay, well, mm, mm. again, that get the, this hedge is basically on are things like atmosphere and all that illegal in the U.S. Maybe I don't know. I'm not sure about Canada though. I think Canada would still be fine. Defendant must be held accountable for willingly provide, willfully providing users the means to violate Nintendo's intellectual property rights at such a scale. Okay, let me just, again, when it comes to the piracy argument, I would just like to highlight um, this on the FAQ. <coughs> you are legally required to dump your games. It's not like they're straight up promoting piracy that I can see on this. Like, I'm really not missing miss i'm really failing to see anything here that would do that mm-hmm. no yeah i'm just failing to see it i'm failing to see it 
All right, let's take a look at more stuff. This is a civil action seeking equitable relief and damages for unlawful circumvention of copyright protection systems, technological measures, and unlawful trafficking in circumvention technology. Okay. Yeah, that's just... This is more just legalese by the looks of it. I'm not really worried about it. Ooh, the factual background. This will be fun. For decades, Nintendo has been a leading developer and producer of video games and video game consoles. In 1983, yes, yes, okay. So it's basically highlighting Nintendo's long-term legacy. Hard to argue with this. Because these are... Cherish games? Okay, man. Yeah, just kidding. <laughs> In 2017, yes, okay. Nintendo Switch. Nintendo recently released a remastered version of Metroid Prime. Was that recently, though? That was like over a year ago. I think. Yeah. And the GameCube, the remastered version, sold over a million. The popularity, yes, expanded significant resources. The popularity of Nintendo's video games and video game consoles has made Nintendo the par target of intellectual property pilots, pirates who <laughs> benefit from Nintendo's innovation and investment by making unauthorized copies of Nintendo's games. Nintendo. I think if you put your games on PC, this wouldn't happen as much. Like, even a generation removed. Like, I'm gonna go ahead and say, if you put, like, put your games, like, even if it was Wii U and earlier, you put them on Steam, or you put them on your own site, avail available for purchase, people would buy them, and then we wouldn't, people wouldn't need to turn to things like illegal, uh, to ROM sites and all that. Because you, I think for you'll find for the majority of stuff that's being pirated, in especially when it comes to older gens, it's not it's not from a lack of of you know willingness to pay. It's from Nintendo's unwillingness to sell. Like I think you'll find the major um I would say a, a solid number of pirates in my experience, or would-be pirates, are willing to pay, but they cannot buy in a way that supports the developers. So if maybe Nintendo should consider giving people a way to support them with their ret with their back catalog. And seriously. Nintendo has exp expended significant resources. Yes, you guys have. Much to everyone's chagrin. Just put the games on PC. In March 2017, Nintendo released a new console called the Switch. Um, uh, yes, fine, whatever. It comes out. That is not really a thing. This is more. Nintendo allows users to either purchase physical cartridges or from the eShop. Yep. Yeah. The Nintendo eShop is the only lawful way to download Switch games in digital format. These authorized copies of games are protected by two or three different measures. Yep, okay. Yep, it does, and that's how it works. Each Switch... And then it kind of goes into detail about how it works, which I think is really cool. I'm not going to talk about it here, but it is interesting that... Inter it is interesting that they kind of talk about it a little bit. They talk about it enough to get by the legalese. Putting this all together, when the user of a Switch game console goes to play an authentic game, yes, it goes through the whole process. That's fine. Third, each authentic console also contains technological measures. So yes, are checked when the con console boots. Yeah, okay. So it's that's not unexpected. In the ordinary course of operation, the technological measures require the application. Of, yes, Yuzu is a video game editor. It's a piece of software that allows the general computing devices to play video games. Published for a specific console. Defendant makes two versions of Yuzu, yes, for PC, for Windows and Linux. Yuzu can be downloaded for free, so there isn't actually a need to pay for this. So if the, that which is huge, because if there was, this would be a slam dunk case for Nintendo, I'm pretty sure, in my uneducated legal opinion. Uh, defendant maintains a Patreon page, which solicits monthly donations for the projects in exchange for access to daily updates and special... Ooh. Oh no. This actually might be a problem. It might be a problem. If Ninte if Yuzu has been using anything other than their own code, basically, 
they're done. But I don't think they are. I would be amazed if they were dumb enough to do that. But again, I just want to... Yeah, I would be amazed. Similarly on Google Play, yes, that happens. Kuzu's Patreon has 7,000 patrons and brings in 30,000. That's actually pretty nice. Nice. Uh, the free version download over a million times, the paid version download. Okay. Okay, that's... Yes. So that what Nintendo is saying is the developers of Yuzu are making money from their own creation. That just happens to play Nintendo Switch games. It does get into a gray area, but it's just... To me, it doesn't... That's probably the, that's actually probably the strongest argument Nintendo's made so far. I hate to say it, but that's probably the strongest argument Nintendo's made so far. Um, it's got some more detail below. For, for Yuzu, a user could have keys and they could have encrypted game ROMs, but they couldn't play games. Okay, they yes, they provide... Yes, that is... Yes, that's not really... Still not a Yuzu problem. Yes, they must start with a hack... Yeah, then it goes into how the quick start guide works. Basically, they're trying to, they're saying because it links to these, um, that's a problem. Okay. Still, you can link to things that are, which, that also could be pretty strong, depending on how things get ruled. This is interesting. If user follows the, def if a user follows the defendant's instructions and utilizes it, Basically, the user will be able... Basically, it's saying that if you follow instructions, things will ha things are happen that are illegal, but at the end of the day, Yuzu is not telling you to follow them. They are not requiring you to follow them. They are telling you how to do it if you want to, but you don't have to if you don't want to use the emulator. Like, There's a difference to me between actively saying you need to do this and... If you want to use this piece of software and play your games, these are the things you have to do. Like, you're not under any... To me, it doesn't... That does not quite hold water. Interesting. And <laughs> Nintendo went after into a Discord server, so Discord's not as secure as we thought. Setting up Yuzu was complicated. Um, unfortunately, at this time, it's not simple as running a sim simple script, hence why I go through the whole process. You need to basically learn what they are. Oh, users probably just pirate it. See, this is not a good, this is not a good look. Like, however, stating the reality of a situation in terms of piracy stuff does not a guilty verdict make. I think. Like, I would be very, like, it looks bad, and I think it is bad. Like, users probably just do that. But there's a difference between stating the reality and stating this officially is their stance. To me. And then all of this is, I am not a lawyer. So, grain of salt. Need based on information and belief. Most users of Yuzu does not go through the quick start guide and do not circumvent their own consoles. Okay, indeed, they go through... <laughs> indeed... Okay, you want to go after these websites, Nintendo? Then go after these websites. But it's still not... That's not Yuzu themselves. Like, that's not a problem. To play a Nintendo Switch video game in Yuzu, they unlawfully decrypt it. Okay, so it goes back to the argument of, is all those tools legal? And that I don't know enough to say one way or the other. I'm not, So I'm not even going to state. I'm not even going to try. Yuzu is used for widespread privacy and defendant has knowledge of the infringements. Okay. Let's see. Any copy... Yes, therefore, infringement copies played in Yuzu would otherwise have to be purchased if Nintendo offered its games on the PC platform. You guys should. Please. <laughs> like, the sketchy ROM site shouldn't need to exist. You should just offer the games. You have them. So, just do it. Nintendo, has, the, as the copyright owner, has the right to decide when... Yes, yes, fine. Both with respect to its current forthcoming games and with respect to any games in its legacy collection. Fine, yes. But the harm to Nintendo caused by defendants and Yuzu goes far beyond. Okay. There's a, a robust community of IP thieves who distributed pirated 
Switch ROMs, which again, I think for current gen stuff, you should always be supporting the devs of the games that you enjoy. And I do think it's scummy not to. Absolutely. So yes, there is a whole subreddit about it. See, in, July, in June 2023, Reddit banned, banned it as it was violating the content policy. Okay. That's fine. So Reddit's banned it. Like, I'm failing to see... One of the links provided a subreddit went to a GitHub page with simplified instructions, which are still online. Okay. That's... Okay, but that's still not Yuzu. Nintendo has public... Uh, yes, there's another one. Every... Full copies of the game began to be circulated because, yes, okay, and yes, I agree. At the time, I remember this at the time, it was scummy, it was horrible, and Nintendo absolutely should go after those users. But it is not, but that is still not the fault of Yuzu. And, you know, just over a million times, yes, that was terrible, especially, but I'm more okay with it personally if they actually had bought the game and just didn't want to wait, like, to me, there's a difference between... That boils down to that difference. Just personally. But if you straight up just pirated the game and didn't buy it, then yeah. Shame on you. Um, the illegally downloaded copies were capable of being played in over 20% of all the games. Download links for the game specifically refer to emulation in the title link. Yeah, because the game hadn't released yet. <laughs> Notably, between this, the membership, paid members, which private members, more... Wow. Wow, that is a mouthful. Notably, between May 1st and May 12th, membership on the Yuzu Patreon, which provides paid members more updated early access builds, doubled. Okay. Yeah. On behalf of um, information and belief, thousands of paid members signed up so they could download the early access build. Interesting. So, Fended and its agents were fully aware that the reason membership exploded was Yuzu was being played. Okay. Indeed, this actually is a good thing. This is actually a good thing. See, here's the... This is actually... It's interesting Nintendo does statements of fact, and then this kind of almost gets rid of it. See, so the developer implements a ban on it in the server. Okay. Which is understandable, That's because that's trying to stay on the right side of the law. And, but because it's open source, many individuals, so not user, not the user developers themselves, let's make that clear, individuals quickly developed and released mods that were capable of playing it. Okay. So, but use it, but the developers of Yuzu themselves didn't build it. So I'm failing to see how that's Yuzu's fault. Like, it, it's an open source project. Sometimes those don't get used in the best way. That's still not the fault of you. That's not the fault of the Yuzu devs. The previous version is piracy. Prevalence of piracy harmed. Yes, it. Yeah, it did. And then I, yeah, this tweet. Yeah, this is. Yeah, which is a shame. And then there's telemetry, which attack collects anonymous data about its use of the software, includes what games are playing so they can discover it. Okay, yeah, this was... Uh, yes, that's fine, though. Yeah, so what it's saying is pirated games exist on this site. Pirated games... Pirated ROM sites exist all the time. Yes, on various servers hosted by various companies. Does that mean the companies need to be shut down? I don't think so. Like... Go af you want to go after the ROM sites? Okay, that's different than going after the emulators. Yuzu's lead developer has been the center of console emulation for years. Okay, so, yeah, that's, I don't... Okay, fine. A 3DS emulator, and then, yeah, it talks about Citra. And then Yuzu provides a game compatibility list. Yes, that's fine. That's just so people know what games work and what don't. That's not a big deal. Okay, then like a number of compatible games, not yes, fine. Fine, 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 fine. Not really see Okay. Discussed major titles were available or playable in Yuzu on their day of release. Okay, so this gets to the next argument. Yeah? That's like, when asked what areas of Nintendo Switch em well, before we get to that, <laughs> when asked what areas of Nintendo Switch emulation 
Bunny is most interested in. They responded, any changes to get new games booting for the first time. So anybody working on a passion project, which just happens to be an image, like, that's, yeah. You know what? That should be, you should be excited over that. That's actually kind of cool. And then it's, and it goes on and says, hey, look, this work, all these games work in the same way. Okay. Sometimes, Nintendo, here's a shocking concept for you in computer science. Sometimes things work with new, with, and you don't have to update the code base to get them to work. Sometimes this happens. And major, and this might have been just what happened here. Like, that happens sometimes, especially in emulation. Like, I have, <laughs> like, it happens. Like, I've got a computer science minor. I can tell you that sometimes I just implement things. I'm like, wait a minute. I've already, this already kind of does stuff. I just have to take some, call some extra functions here and I've got the thing implemented. That might be similar to what's happened here. Not a big deal. In fact, many instances, they get games running the day before the game's release in the United States. In the United, that's good legalese. Because if you scroll down here to Xenoblade Chronicles, okay, May 28th at 9.23 p.m. If we look over here, Nintendo, release date, May 29th, 2020. So the game had been out for 12 hours, basically, by the t plus in places other than the U.S. So yeah, guess what? Guess what, guys? Sometimes... A, this may be another situation where it just works on the existing code base, which is fine. That happens sometimes. But it's already been talked about. Not a big deal. Like, yeah, it happens before release in the U.S., but the U.S. is not the only country in the world. Bunnies made it repeatedly clear they've dumped games. Oh, no. Anyway, so have I, Nintendo. Come at me. <laughs> um, And then it talks about the goes into about the various counts of things and about the rest of it. I don't think there's anything in here that would be... Yeah, it looks like all the rest of it is just meh. So, yeah. Like, that's... That's kind of the argument, and... I'm sorry, but it seems almost weak to me. Like, there isn't anything in here that... To me, screams that a Yuzu is uh, Yuzu, Yuzu uh, is somehow directly profiting from piracy. Because is the question is is Yuzu hosting any ROMs or anything that's like are they selling cop pirated ROMs of Tears of the Kingdom, for example? No, they're not. In fact, they are. They always say right here, you are legally required to do this to dump your games from your Nintendo Switch. So what Nintendo's argument boils down to is four questions. Number one, are can you dump games from your hardware? And in doing so, circumvent all the various security stuff. The D I am not I'm not sure about the legal precedent on that. I'm not gonna answer it. Number two, if that is true, is the act of emulation itself legal? Well, yes, see I do know enough to answer that. It's yes. Three. Can you in a situation where can the emulation the emu, the developers of the emulator be held responsible for the for the piracy actions of its users? That's a good question. So in the same token, so can you so and number four can you provide instructions, and let's assume all of this was in four, can you provide instructions on how to do all this and dump your games? And I think the answer to that's pr all, all of those is, especially when it comes to, I, actually, I don't know. I'm not going to comment on it. I don't know enough about that stuff to have a valid opinion. But like I said, I'm going to leave this all of this as a link in the description. I highly encourage you to check it out. And overall, my closing thoughts are this. Number one, too often emulation is not an issue of piracy. It is a service issue. You, mu you must, as a game developer, you have to recognize that to whatever extent, no matter what measures you take, if users want to pirate a game, they will. And it sucks. 
And for those individuals who do it without any intention of paying developers money, shame on you. Genuinely shame on you. As a rule, as gamers, we should make an effort to support the developers of the games that we love, wherever possible. In particular, when it comes to current-gen stuff, there's just no excuse for it. And in general, my view is a good-faith effort should be made when it comes to acquiring the hardware and the software needed to play games. On that note, however, some parts of emulation is about game preservation, and preserving the games that we love for our children their children's children, to enjoy. And with that in mind, my personal view on this is I hope you, the devs of Yuzu open up a GoFundMe or something for legal fees and fight Nintendo tooth and nail, because I think they can win. I really do. I think this will be, if, if they even take the case, it wouldn't surprise me if this just gets dismissed with prejudice. Because I... <laughs> My fear, however, is that Nintendo will operate in bad faith and just drag the devs of Yuzu back into court over and over and over again, because they have the money to do so. And to that end, I don't know what we do. But I think as gamers, it is our responsibility to stand up for what is right, and even and I'm going to use my platform, no matter how small it is, to stand up for what I feel is right, and I, do not, and I feel that this lawsuit is wrong. On so many levels, this lawsuit is wrong. So, completely support Yuzu, and I think it is imperative that they win, not just for the sake of the developers, but for emulation itself. However, again, just to reiterate all of this, I'm not a lawyer. I have, I don't, I'm not trained to practice law, I don't. So I encourage you, if another, if a lawyer posts a video on this, you know, like Law by Mike or somebody similar does something with this, go watch that video, because they will know way more about the various legalese and all that than I will. I am just a guy who plays video games, records them, suffers, and also does the occasional proof and real analysis. So, yeah. Um, I hope this video, is, I know it's not my usual style, but this is an exceptional circumstance, and I think we should all start, we should all send support to Yuzu, one way or the other. So with that in mind, thank you everybody for watching. Um, I'm not going to ask you to do anything like liking the video or subscribing it to me. That's not the point of this video. You can if you want to, but I'm not going to ask. But I do think that if you found it informative, I hope you'll share it. Because I think it needs to be... And I hope you'll also read, the, read through the filing yourself and come to your own conclusions on it. So thank you. Thank you all for watching, and I hope this was informative. Goodbye.